process I'm going to share with you today can be used by literally any small channel with literally any type of content you might make. That goes for long videos, YouTube shorts, even live streams. And we're jumping right in. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard us say that for YouTube, you really should identify a target audience. But in order to do that, you also need to identify the type of content that you want to make. And to do this, what I want you to do is ask yourself, what is it that I'm good at or what is it that I'm just obsessed with? Because starting a YouTube channel around a topic that you're not familiar with simply because you think, oh, I think this is trending. I think this will get a lot of views. I'll make a whole channel about it. That's only going to slow you down. And once you know what your channel is going to be about, that is when it's so much easier to identify a target audience. And to do this research, you want to look at creators who are kind of already doing what you're thinking of doing. This this will tell you if there's even an audience for that type of content, and then you can see the potential ceiling. How successful can a channel be covering this type of topic? While you're doing this, I want you to look at the top channels and see what is it they're doing really, really well, but also what is it that you feel they could improve upon? To take this one step further, you could also be checking out the comment sections of really popular videos in this space to see how the audience is responding to them and what type of questions they generally have. This research isn't something you do over one afternoon. I would say you want to spend a couple of days on this, but by the end of this research, you're going to have a much better understanding of your ideal viewer. The next step in this process is to actually be your ideal viewer. I want you to spend the next few days living as your ideal viewer. I want you to be joining subreddits and discords and other communities around the topic that you want to cover on your channel. Look for questions being asked in these communities. Ask some questions yourself and look for things that inspire and excite this group of people. I feel like as you're living as your ideal viewer, 70% of your time should really be spent off of YouTube. The reason being is that you're trying to generate ideas. And while it is good to see what's working and make your own version of that in terms of YouTube videos you're looking at, it's also good to come up with some original ideas. And those original ideas can be much easily gathered if you're really familiar with your space. And that is why it's important to look for these communities in other places on the internet. So for all this work you're doing over these few days, what you're really doing is generating content ideas. And as you go through this research, I want you to just keep an active list of potential video ideas. And then I want you to put it all together. So by now you should have a very specific, highly targeted, highly focused list of video ideas that you're going to make for your channel. I want you to put pen to paper here. Script these videos, or at the very least, write a detailed outline for each one. And again, if you are a live streaming channel, you should also be planning out your live streams in a similar fashion. And if you're having trouble imagining what this might look like for you, let me share with you my outline and all of my ideas that I wrote down for this video you're watching right now. I started with writing a clear goal for this video. In this case, help motivate small creators to focus on specific goals for their YouTube channels. From there, I went straight into my outline, which actually became kind of a partial script for the video. The next step for me was to write down a handful of title ideas once I was finished with my outline. And I gotta be honest, I actually wish I had more of these ideas, but I really like these three so much. And if the video once published happens to perform not so great, you might notice these titles kind of changing throughout that first day. Now, before we move on, I know thinking of titles ahead of time can be a little bit intimidating. You're still trying to figure out what your video is gonna be about. I have a tool that can help you here. Even as a free user of our vidIQ tools, you will have some access to the AI title recommendations we have. Using these is incredibly simple. Here's how it works. Start with a phrase that kind of describes the video you're trying to make. For me, we'll use one of my favorite hypothetical topics, and that is Pokemon trading cards. Once you have your phrase, all you have to do is click Get AI Title Recommendations. Our AI title generator is going to give you a number of eye-catching titles, and if you love the one you see, all you have to do is click Use, but these should at the very least get you thinking about the type of title you're going to actually put on your video word for word. You can also do this totally separate from the YouTube studio by going to app.vidIQ.com. Make sure you're on channel dashboard and you can continue to use the AI title recommendations here without disturbing any of the videos you've currently made. If you're interested, the link is down below to download vidIQ. Just make sure to authenticate your channel. Give it a try. Plug aside, the final step for me was deciding what my thumbnail was going to look like. I didn't create the thumbnail before I made the video, but I did decide on a couple of different designs. And all I did for this step was simply write down a couple of sentences that best describe the thumbnail I want to make for this video. That was just my process, and you don't even need to do it in that order. A lot of people like to think of their title before they even write their script, which is totally fine. And you might even have a number of steps in between that you might add to this process. The point I wanna make though is you should have some process like this before you record a single second of video. It makes a huge difference. And then we move on to what you might think is the final step, but it's not. Spoiler alert. Once you've planned out your video and put pen to paper, you have the green light to press record. But I have a power tip for you. 
Don't. Are you serious? Instead, plan out your next three or four videos ahead of time. This extra powerful step will allow you to tie together your next number of videos in various ways. You'll be able to use end screens, pinned comments, and playlists way more effectively. So for example, if you write video A, B, and C, and then you understand what's going to happen in this mini series, you can record video A, and then at the end of your video, have a very specific call to action for video B. Once you publish video B, update your end screen. You've heard us use that tactic a number of times. So whether you use it or not, the next step is going to be uploading your video. You've recorded, you've edited, you've picked a catchy title, and you've even made a thumbnail. You put it all together and you don't hit publish just yet. Once everything is all set up in your YouTube editor and your video is set to private, there is an extra step we can do, an extra safety check. Depending on your vidIQ subscription level, you should have some access to our preview in search results button. All you need to do is think of a search term that people might use to find your video and then click preview and search results. Your video is going to fictionally show up between the top ranking videos for the search term that you typed in. What you're doing in this next step is comparing your video to videos that currently rank really high for the search term. If you feel like your title and your thumbnail stand out here, then great. But if you're having some doubts, just make adjustments as you see fit and then you can press publish. Yeah! And you might think that publishing a video means you're done and you can move on to the next project. And it certainly can, but there is one final thing we actually didn't get to touch on yet. And that is that you can actually go back through your older videos. And in certain cases, you could be updating the titles and thumbnails of those videos and give them kind of a second wind. And there's actually quite a bit to this next step. And that's why I'm gonna recommend you watch this video right here because you can see how the pros did this to great success.